how to pick the right planner for you. In this video, I will break down all the things you want to think about before buying a planner. I will also share some tips along the way on how to use your planner to stay organized. And I will review the bullet journal that I use as a planner, your generic run of the mill planner that you can find at any bookstore or Amazon, the passion planner, Hemlock and Oak, the Hobonishi Cousin, and the Hobonishi Weeks. That way you get a better perspective of some of your options to get you started. Here's how I will walk you through the thought process behind figuring out which planner is for you. We are going to look at your current planner or productivity system, what your needs are, and from there figure out the best planner for you. And as I go through the questions, I would encourage you to really pause and think about your answers because that's how you will be able to figure out what planner is best for you. And as I go through the mind map questions here, I will also fill out as an example of how to analyze and think it through for yourself. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Seppi and I share with you simple and practical tips to live a happier life. And my planner is one of my go-to tools to stay organized and on top of my habits and everything in my life. So I'm very excited for you that you're interested in getting your own planner and I hope this video will help you. So let's just jump right in. So let's first look at your current system. What do we use right now? Is it digital, analog, maybe a mix of both? Maybe you don't have a system. Or do you have a physical planner, but you just don't use it? Or maybe you write down, write down notes on post-its or random pieces of paper. I want you to think about all the renditions of your current system and start thinking about what you like and dislike for each of them, or maybe why you're doing it the way that you are. Why are you using a post-it? Why are you using scraps of paper? Maybe you don't have a system, maybe you don't know how to stay organized. Maybe you don't know how to use a planner. Start thinking about why you're doing the things that you're doing. That way we can solve that problem together. So for myself, I use a mix of digital and analog. I have my planner for my life and I have planning to do for my business as well. So a mix of both works best for me. I also use my calendar on my phone, especially when I'm on the go. If an appointment or a schedule or an event comes up, I put it in my, my iPhone and my calendar. And every single week when I Sit down and plan my week, I have the habit of pulling out my calendar, looking at what's scheduled ahead and planning my week that way. So that is how I use it myself. Next thing I want you to think about, what do you like and dislike about your current system? What's working? What's not working? Do you find that you're organized, disorganized? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel as though you need to get a better hang of your appointments? Are you always behind on schedule? Think about what's working in your life and in your productivity system. What are the like missing pieces? Pieces, and why do you do the things that you do? For example, if you have a calendar on your phone or maybe you have a small notebook you take with you, is it because it's practical? Is it because it's easy? Or is it because you just don't know how else to do it? Start thinking about those elements. That way, again, we can fill in the gaps and create a better system for you. And then I want you to think about whether you really need to change the system that you already have or not. Or maybe we can just make some small adjustments to what you currently use. That way you do make best use of your current system to stay productive and actually efficient and make use of the system that you already have. Now for myself, some of the things that I like and dislike about my current system, what I like is having analog. I love writing in my planner because I also get to make it aesthetic and use my creativity. So I really love that aspect. This year I've been using the Hobonishi Cousin. It's my second year using it. I did a full walkthrough of how I use my Hobonishi Cousin. And this year my system, I truly love it. So if you wanna watch that video, Video, make sure to watch that next. What I like as well is that my digital system is I've made some changes here and there. I've been using Notion and I do enjoy it, although I don't feel as though I have the system packed down just yet, but I do enjoy it. And I also enjoy that I have a planner separate from my daily journal, which is something for you to think about as well. We'll go through that in your needs after. Do you want to keep your planner and your daily journaling together? Do you want to incorporate some mindfulness habits in your planner? For myself, I keep my Hobonishi cousin for my daily plan planning separate. I have a separate little B6 journal for my daily journaling and I love keeping them separate. It feels a lot better that way. So that's one thing that I do love about my current system. Thing that I don't like about my system, it does feel a little all over the place, especially when it comes to my business. I use analog and digital together and it just doesn't feel organized and it feels a little overwhelming. So I do have to organize myself a little bit better when it comes to my planning system for my business. I use Notion, my bullet journal. I do sometimes brain dumps. I also have Word documents on my laptop, so it gets really messy. So I don't have a good system when it comes to my business. So those are my likes and dislikes of my current system. 
Now that you have a better idea of your current system, let's think about some of your needs before we get into the actual planner that you want to get, because this will help guide your decision on what planners to look at and what elements you want to be looking at when buying your planner. So the first things first, what is your day-to-day -day schedule like? Do you have a lot of meetings and have a lot to keep track of during the weekday and the weekend? Or do you have a nine to five job so that your weekdays are mostly the same like myself and you just need to maybe organize your life a little bit more broadly speaking do you need a page for your daily schedule because you have a lot of appointments and things to do every single day that you have to keep track of or maybe a weekly overview planner or even a monthly overview would be sufficient for your appointments and everything else start thinking about your schedule and what your needs are for myself I like having a daily schedule because I like getting very meticulous with everything I want to get done between my life my business my chores and my health habits I like having a daily overview but I prefer having a weekly overview for all my appointments because I don't have that much I have a nine to five job so during the weekday it pretty much stays the same but I also like having the hourly view and the weekly spread because like I said if I have like appointments during the day when I'm supposed to be at work it helps me organize myself a little bit better and weekdays and weekends for me it's a bit of both so actually I should probably check those off so I do like to have a view of weekdays and weekends as well because like I said life business everything else it becomes a lot so start thinking about your schedule and fill that in next thing to consider what do you want to use your planner for? What are the things that you want to keep track of or things that you want to organize or to be more on top of in your life? Is it appointments? Is it meetings? Is it birthdays? Is it trips? Is it events? Is it to-do lists? Is it your groceries? Is it meal planning? Is it your business? Is it your habits? So mindfulness habits that you want to keep track of. This will help you again guide kind of which planner you're going to get. So for myself, I do like to keep track of my schedule appointments as well birthdays events so if there's anything planned with my family or girls night or whatever else I like to have things organized so I can organize my workouts and everything else I have going on depending on if I know the weekend is very busy etc my to-do list of course habits as well I like to incorporate my habits into my planner because I find it just easier for me to organize my life and incorporating my healthy habits in there and then meals as well having a better idea I like to cycle sync my cycle with with different meals to help support my body with my hormones so I like to meal plan a little bit which I was going to check off groceries but no groceries I do that on my phone because I'm on the go so groceries I can check it off I'm at the grocery store gratitude journaling you can also incorporate that in your planner or some kind of journaling if you like for myself I like to keep that separate most of the time and is there anything else that's coming up anything else that you think you want to use your planner for for myself I like to do brain dumps so if I feel overwhelmed there's too much on my brain I like to take my journal out write everything that's on my brain and just dump it out and makes me feel a little less overwhelmed and also general life admin tasks those things that we have to be doing but we always push back calling the lawyer donating things to your local shelter that kind of thing I like to also keep track of those things to actually get things done and instead of procrastinating that with on them all the time next thing to consider based on the answers from the previous two questions how much space will you reasonably need in your planner do you like to have a lot of space so you can doodle and incorporate a lot of things or are you okay with having a little bit of space do you like having a lot of space and you're okay with empty space or do you prefer having something small and concise and really fit everything in into like a small little space this will determine which planner you're going to end up picking so just start thinking about how much space you reasonably need to get you started for myself I like having more space to spread it out I don't like when things are too stuck together it just feels too cluttered and I don't like that and I like to have space to be able to incorporate some creative elements into my planner next thing to consider in line with the same thought process will you be using your planner at home on the go or a mix of both if it's going to be on the go then thinking about the size of your purse and how much you actually carry around all day and if you have a car or you're commuting this will determine the size of the planner that you are going to want to consider getting because it can get heavy of course for myself I use my planner mostly at home on the go like I said I, I use my phone I just end enter in my notes anything that I need to remember or I put in my calendar right away. Next thing to consider, budget. How much are you willing to spend on your planner? You can get planners that are a lot exp quite expensive, get more, you know, fancy and all that and get more into stationery and the type of paper and everything else. Or you can stick to more basic, which is nothing wrong with that, but more basic plan planners that you can get that are a bit more generic. So think about your budget, how much you're willing to spend, especially if you're starting off. Make sure that you're comfortable with the amount that you're spending 
spending considering that you might not stick to the same planner or you might not stick to the same system you are starting off so just keep that in mind for myself i'm into stationery so i like to spend a little bit more on my planner and i find that it makes the experience a lot more positive a lot more enjoyable i like to spend a little bit more on my, on my stationery because i just enjoy the experience of it so factor that in when you're thinking about the planner you're going to want to get and now that you have a better idea of you know your current system your needs it's worth taking the time to look at how other people use their respective planners to see what they include in theirs what they track what they write in it how they stay organized what their system is so don't get overwhelmed but start just paying attention to the things that pique your interest the things that you think could be interesting for you to include in your planner and you can write it out some of the ideas but I also want you to be realistic with what you will actually use and be able to keep up with so are you likely to use it yes or no so for myself I like the idea of having a daily spread and yes I am going to be using it weekly and monthly spread as well everything to track my appointments birthdays etc I liked the idea of having all in one so having my journaling and my planner in one that way I only take out one journal and I can do everything in one instead of getting overwhelmed and bringing out a few different journals however I tried it out and it's not realistic for me so I did not check this off I'm not likely to stick to that habits tracker as well yes I use it yes I love it yes I like having it in my planner so yes I'm likely to stick to it I love the idea of memory keeping especially when it comes to Hobonichi cousin there's so many beautiful spreads that I see out there with on the weekly spread or the monthly spread of memory keeping and I love the idea not realistic for me because I have my own goal setting system in my bullet journal so that's not realistic it just becomes redundant so I'm not gonna like I'm not likely to stick to it and then in terms of habits tracking kind of health tracking as well when it comes to my steps and workouts etc also realistic for me to incorporate it with my planning because if you're planning your health habits and things that like your workouts incorporating that into your schedule makes you more likely to stick to it so for me it is a realistic way for me to actually use my planner or something that I'm going to be using in my planner which leads me to the next section of the video where I will review the planners that I have used in the last number of years and share what I liked and dislikes for each of them how I use them and give you some ideas of how you can use your planner that way you have a bit of a starting point of different options that you might have that you want to consider when you're out shopping and wanting to buy your own planner so the first planner that I want to review is the bullet journal this is the a5 medium dot grid journal from Loistrom which I highly recommend in terms of price point in terms of quality it's really worthwhile I also have a 20% discount code for Loistrom Canada if you want to get yourself one of their planners or the bullet journal so what I loved about the bullet journal system is that you can get really creative with it and really have fun with it it is very versatile and gives you a lot of flexibility to adapt to your needs and to create your own spreads based on your needs and it might vary every single week so I really enjoyed the creative aspect of it and just having fun with it every single week. And the other great thing is that there is a lot of content, content out there on how to get started when it comes to bullet journaling, how to create spreads, how to make use of it, what to incorporate in your bullet journal. As you can see, this bullet journal is actually what I used for my goals as well as for my planner. So I used it for a mix of things. So I adapted it to my needs and what I enjoyed using it for. And like I said, there's a lot of content out there for you to get started if you want to get into the bullet journaling system so you can figure out a system that works for you I have done videos on my bullet journal how I use it as well and you can find also templates that you can print and actually stick in your bullet journal if it feels too overwhelming to create your own spreads I do have a few templates on my Etsy shop as well so I'll leave the information in the description box for that now as much as I love the bullet journal system it has changed throughout the years I'm on maybe year eight I think at this point so this is my current bullet journal which I absolutely love and I still use the bullet journal however the way that I use my bullet journal has changed along the years because it is very time consuming to create spreads every single week especially if you're using it for your planner and that also makes it feel a little overwhelming and then you're less likely to stay organized if you don't have time to create a weekly 
evenly spread every single week and therefore you're less likely to use your planner if you don't have the time or you feel overwhelmed to create a weekly planner spread or a monthly planner spread. So in terms of ease of use, I would say the bullet journal system is probably the hardest planner to get started in. Price point is low. You can get any dot grid journal or you can get the same one as me, the A5 dot grid medium journal from Loistrom. The price point for the quality is really good. It stands the test of time. It doesn't bleed through. The quality is really great for the price point that you're getting. And I would recommend the bullet journal for anyone that wants to get really creative and feels really up for the challenge to figure out what works for you. What You just get excited trying different things. You can try different layouts until you find one that works for you. And I would recommend it for anyone that has the time and the discipline to actually create your spreads because like I said before, it is very time consuming and if you don't stick to it, then you're less likely to actually create your weekly spreads every single week and you're less likely to stay organized. The next planner that I want to review is your generic run-of-the-mill planner that you can find at most stationery and bookstores and online, of course, on Amazon. So these generic, more generic planners are a lot more accessible to find, and it's easy to find something really simple and really straightforward that can just meet your most basic planning needs for a general to-do list. There are many different options out there, many different brands, so many different different layouts and prices are generally very affordable so you don't have to spend a lot especially if you're getting into journaling and planning then if you don't want to spend a lot then looking into a more generic planner might be a good starting point however the one thing that I will say is that because they're more generic the quality is going to probably be a bit lower than the other options available to you the, we're talking about the quality of the paper the cover or the binding won't necessarily be as good and won't necessarily stand the test of time depending on how you use it and if you have never owned a planner it can also still feel overwhelming to decide which one to pick to decide what layout you want which planner you want to get etc so it can also still feel overwhelming even though it's a bit more generic to figure out what will suit your needs best so in terms of ease of use, I would say this is about a four on five. Um, Price-wise, it's more on the lower end, so it's a bit more accessible. And I recommend a generic planner for someone who doesn't care about necessarily the aesthetics of a planner. So just really like this planner that I had, this is from 2017. But if you have a planner that you don't really care about the aesthetics and you just want to write things out and then just really for it to be just functional. And if you're looking for an entry-level planner, this is also helpful to try out generic planners because because if you want to try out a specific layout, you can try it out and then you can see if you like the layout or not. And if you don't, then you can get another one and you won't have spent and wasted as much money. It's a way, it's a good way to get started and to try different layouts out in different planners. The next planner I'm going to review is the Passion Planner, and I actually love this planner quite a bit. It is quite bigger, as you can see, it's taking up most of the frame of the camera. This is a really beautiful product. I have to say, I really enjoyed using it when I did have it. It's great quality, the paper is really great, the binding is great, the cover is really great. It's like this really nice leather as well. So overall, it's a really great quality. And another great thing about the passion planner is that it's a system within and of itself so to make most use of it you do have to follow the system otherwise the money that you're investing in the planner isn't worth it I personally as you can see ended up not using the system because like I've mentioned before I have my own goal setting process that I follow in my bullet journal and so it just became redundant for me to do the same thing similar that I was doing in the passion planner and my bullet journal I also follow Find that this planner does give a really good very straightforward and enough space in terms of its layout you have a weekly overview here with your timetable quite a lot of space in terms of the focus the one that I got was undated you can get a dated one as well and you have plenty of space for it to be versatile enough you have space for to-do list for work personal
single basic space here to do anything else. So in terms of layout, I do think it's quite good and it's quite straightforward and easy to use. However, this could also be a con because the other thing you have to keep in mind is because it is a system in and of itself, you have to get a hang of it. You have to get a hang of how to use the Passion Planner system on how to maximize the use of all the spreads within it. That way you can really benefit from the system that they created, which can also feel overwhelming. If you have never used a planner, if you have never set goals, they c this can just feel a little overwhelming, although they do a pretty good job at guiding you through the whole process. Another thing that I feel lacked was the daily spreads, which is something I really enjoy. I like having a monthly, weekly, and daily spread. So that's one thing you have to factor in. Like I said before, what are your needs? Like I said, I like to have a daily spread. So I would recommend the Passion Planner for someone that's looking for an all-in-one planning and goals. So if you want to set your goals, set, you know, achieve your goals, set better habits, stay on top of your habits, the Passion Planner is really good for that but you also want to incorporate all of that into your planning that's really good if you want to do that price point it is a little bit on the pricier side and in terms of ease of use i would say it's about a four just because you have to get used to the goal setting system that it's in, that's incorporated inside the planner the next planner is from Hemlock and Oak, another beautiful product that I really enjoyed using. I love it because it's really great quality. The paper is great. The binding is great. It's a really good size. It's not too big. It's just the right size. It's also a Canadian brand, which I also love supporting as well, that they do have good business practices, which is really great. The also great thing about this planner is that it's quite minimalist in terms of its look. That way you can really easily adapt and decorate or not decorate decorated to your needs. So I really enjoyed that as well. Another great thing is that it does also incorporate and have its own kind of goal setting system incorporated in the planner itself as well, which I really love. But again, I didn't make use of it because I have my own system for myself. So that's something to factor in to see if that is something you're interested in. Now, in terms of the cons, it is on the pricier side as well. It only has the weekly overview that's a bit smaller than the passion planner. So I did felt feel a little tight for my needs. There's space at the bottom for a weekly to-do list, but again, for myself and my needs, it was a little bit small. The timetable on your weekly spread is only from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. So if you need a weekly overview with more time, like more space to set up your time, your appointments, etc., that's something to factor in as well. And there are no daily spreads, like I mentioned before, that's something that I really enjoy using for myself. So although it's a beautiful product, Product and I do highly recommend it. It did just did not fit my needs personally speaking, but it might fit yours. So in terms of ease of use, I would say it's about a three. The goal setting system is a little bit more simple than the passion planner. So it's a little bit more easy to use. It is however on the pricier side. I recommend it for anyone that wants to have a very simple goal setting system incorporated with their planner and that are looking for a planner that does not require, that you don't need as much space for your appointments or your to-do list every single week. And the next planner we have is the Hobonishi Cousin. This is last year's, this is this year's. And yes, you can probably guess it, I truly love it. It is really great quality, but also a bit particular, maybe in terms of the paper. I did a full review of the Hobonishi Cousin if you're interested potentially in getting it. So I'll make sure to watch that video. It's a bit more in-depth review of the pros and cons of the Hobonishi Cousin. However, what I love about it, generally speaking, there's the layout is really great. You have your monthly overview, your weekly overview, and then a daily overview as well. So there's a lot of different layouts that gives you a lot of flexibility to create a system within itself for that will meet your needs. And that's why I really liked it for myself. It can feel a little overwhelming on how to use it because it's a mix of your own system, but also a mix of having their own elements of a typical planner. So it really depends on how comfortable you feel in terms of using a planner and if you feel up for the challenge of creating your own spreads. The other great thing about the Hobonishi Cousin is that there's a lot of content out there as well in terms of how to use it, what to use it for, what to incorporate into it. I've also shared my videos on how I use my Hobonishi Cousin mainly as a functional planner, mostly. So if you want to watch that video as well, if you're interested in potentially getting Hobonishi Cousin, make sure to watch that next. There's also another great thing about the Hobonishi Cousin, which I guess for the bullet journal is the same thing. There's also a lot of 
stationery and stickers adapted to the Hobonishi cousin that's really formatted to the right to the same size as it so that's kind of fun because you can get stickers that really fit in perfectly into your planner in terms of ease of use I would say it's about a three because it's versatile enough that there is really simple spreads and it's not too cluttered that you can make it your own but it doesn't feel as overwhelming as something like the bullet journal it is however on the pricier side however it is really beautiful paper especially if you're into stationery this is a Tomo River paper so it's really renowned and really wonderful to use so it makes it a really enjoyable experience the Hobonishi cousin I recommend it for someone that wants a good planner that you will likely stick to year after year even at the price point point. and if you want space for journaling and goal setting as well this does provide enough space for you to do that so last year I incorporated my daily journaling in every single day as well and some of my goal setting in here as well so the Hobonishi cousin if you want an all-in-one for planning for goals meal prepping for your habits and for daily journaling you have plenty of space to do that in every single page so that's something to factor in if you want an all-in-one journal planner as well the next planner that you might want to consider is the Hobonishi Weeks. It's also, again, a Hobonishi product, so it's really great quality. The binding is great, the paper is great. It really stands the test of time. And it's best, especially if you want it to be on the go because it's compact, but that's also my issue with it. It's a bit maybe too compact. So the pages are really small. As you can see, in terms of size difference, it's half the size of the Hobonishi Cousin. So it is quite small and because it's so small you have to factor in things like you might not think about the pens that you're using inside of it you have to make sure that the pens are a smaller nib otherwise it gets really messy really fast and you might depending on your your handwriting you might even have to adapt your handwriting to make sure everything fits in properly into the little spaces and that it doesn't get too cluttered so that's why I struggle with the Hobonishi weeks and by April I had fallen off the bandwagon and I stopped using it and I switched over to the Hobonishi Monishi cousin so these are small things to factor in in terms of ease of use again the, the pages are really straightforward you have your weekly spread and space to take notes and you have monthly overview as well very straightforward in terms of a planner and it does have a lot of little elements that are very helpful like these dots to guide if you want to draw lines or this darker line here so there's a lot of like like specific elements that are actually quite helpful I would recommend this for anyone that wants to use a planner on the go or if you have a specific use for it for example if you don't have a lot going on during the week and you just need a very simple small planner this is good for you or if you want to use it for tracking your health or your meals or just small daily journaling that doesn't feel overwhelming if you want to use it for minimal use so you don't want a lot of space this is really great for you just bear in mind it is on the pricier point pricier side of things but again the quality speaks for itself it is still a really good product overall it's really great quality. Now if you want to create your own journal and planner system make sure to watch this video next because I walk you through the same kind of thought process on figuring out a system that works for you and in my next few videos I am going to be starting a journaling series to help you start journaling, share tips on how to stay consistent, walk you through some guided journal prompts as well so make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Thank you so much for watching I'm sending you a lot of love bye for now.